Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is standing behind David De Gea and backing his goalkeeper to return to form, so he will be in goal for United against Huddersfield this weekend. But his form has been abysmal. In his last five games, De Gea has made four errors directly leading to goals, the same amount that he did in the 120 games prior to that. So it's safe to say that De Gea is bang out of form. And because of that, it's led to some calls from some United fans for the club to cash in on De Gea this summer because next year De Gea could leave the club on a free transfer. So would United want to risk keeping De Gea this summer and maybe losing him on a free next year? What I'm going to do in this video is run through some of the reasons I'm seeing for and against De Gea leaving Manchester United this summer. And if there's any I don't mention, I'd like to hear from you in the comments as well. Now, before we get started, you know the drill by now. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe down there, get involved in the community. If you are a regular, drop a like on the video, but let's get straight into it. So I'm gonna start with some of the reasons for selling De Gea this summer. And the first one I'm seeing, everyone saying his head's gone. De Gea has been at fault for more goals in his last five games in the last four years at United. His head is completely gone. And now he's hurting United more than helping United. De Gea, who was once the brilliance of United, is now hindering the club. So taking him out of the team and replacing him would be the best bet because it's clear for these fans that De Gea isn't happy to just sign on the dotted line for United anymore. Let's move him on. And the second reason I'm seeing is the fact that we could lose De Gea on a free transfer next summer. If he decides to keep stalling over wages, thanks to the Alexis Sanchez balls up, could United really take that risk to let De Gea continue and then potentially leave on a free transfer next summer? One of the most valuable players in this squad. Would United really want to take that risk and not try and sell him this summer and use that money to sign a replacement? And the third reason I'm seeing banded around is the idea that De Gea is not worth that much money. The reason De Gea hasn't signed a new contract is because he wants to match Sanchez as United's top earner on more than 300,000 a week. And these fans are suggesting, look, we've seen De Gea's not worth that money. United are better off not spending those wages and that money on De Gea, letting him leave, cashing in on him, and using those extra wages on better new signings and a replacement. And speaking of replacements, a few fans feel that Sergio Romero can step in and become United's number one. He's the best number two that we could really have ever asked for at the club. Certainly the best number two that I remember seeing. And he's good enough to be a lot of Premier League clubs' first choice goalkeeper. And by using Romero as De Gea's replacement, it means that we could then use the money we got from De Gea to buy new players. Because as we know, the Glazers don't really spend too much money. So maybe we've got to sell players to buy players this summer. And that would be a bigger priority for United than keeping De Gea, whose head is really out of the game at the moment. So they are some of the arguments I'm seeing for selling David De Gea this summer. So what I'm going to do now is run through some of the arguments I'm seeing to keep David De Gea this summer at Manchester United. And first and foremost, he is our best player. De Gea has won United's Player of the Year award in four out of the last five years. Yes, he's been in terrible form recently, but United, imagine where United would be if we didn't have De Gea since Fergie retired. He's been a brick wall behind a sieve of a defence. And he's been absolutely unreal. I'm surprised, I suppose, that a dip like this hasn't come a lot earlier, given how bad our defence is. So the idea of setting up one of our best players this summer just is madness. And one of the next arguments is the idea of good luck replacing David De Gea. Do you remember what happened when United tried to replace Peter Schmeichel? And do you remember what happened when United tried to replace Fabian Barthez? United went through a long list of distinctly average goalkeepers. From Massimo Taibbi to Tim Howard to Mark Bosnich. Christ, there are too many for me to mention. We landed on our feet in replacing Edwin van der Sar with David De Gea. But the idea of replacing De Gea is almost impossible in the current market, unless you want to pay upwards of 75, 100 million, which we know that the Glazers won't do if they do sell 
David De Gea. So that's a major reason why United should be holding on to him. It's going to be impossible to bring in a player of that calibre and that quality and just let De Gea leave. And another reason for keeping De Gea is he's genuine captain material. You know, in a squad of distinctly average players, he's got that captain material about him. And at a time where we want to get rid of so many players who are dead wood in this club, Ashley Young, you know, Marouane Fellaini is already gone, Phil Jones, there's too many to really mention. Why would you want to then get rid of one of your best at that time? It doesn't really make any sense. Speaking of captains, have you seen what Adam McCullers had to say on 888 Sport about Jordan Henderson and the idea that if he does ever lift the Premier League trophy with Liverpool, that he would be the worst captain to ever do so? If Liverpool ever win the league with Jordan Henderson as captain, Jordan Henderson has to go down as the worst captain to ever touch that Premier League trophy. And I'm even including Wes Morgan. I mean, come on. He's not wrong, is he? Even Jurgen Klopp benches Jordan Henderson. The only reason he came on against Barcelona is because Naby Keita got an injury. I didn't see Sir Alex Ferguson ever benching Roy Keane. I didn't see Sir Alex Ferguson benching Gary Neville. I didn't see Arsene Wenger benching Patrick Vieira. Jordan Henderson would absolutely be the worst captain to ever lift the Premier League trophy, if it ever happens. But fingers crossed, it never happens. But what do you think? Make sure you click the link in the description, go and watch the video in full, leave a comment on there and say you came from United People's TV, because it's true. Sorry, Jordan. But anyway, back to David De Gea. And the next argument for keeping De Gea at the club is the fact that he's worth every penny. I mean, the reason he's not signed a new contract right now at United is because he wants parity with Alexis Sanchez, who is our top earner on 300, 350,000 pounds a week. De Gea deserves that money. United made a right balls up by giving Sanchez that much money and it's created the conditions for this problem with De Gea. But United need to just pay De Gea the money he deserves. Because he's shown more loyalty in the last few years by staying under Moyes, Van Gaal and Mourinho. He's under his fifth manager at United and he's still at the club. He didn't go to Madrid. Sure, the fax machine helped us, but he didn't go. Given the money he deserves, man, we've got so many problems at this club, but we've got so much money as well. Let's not be frugal when it comes to De Gea, one of the elite world-class players in this squad. Just give him the money. He deserves it. And one more reason for keeping De Gea is the idea that we've seen this all before. You know, when Louis van Gaal was manager and David De Gea was going through contract negotiations again, van Gaal dropped De Gea, left him out of the squad completely. And what happened? De Gea came back into the squad and became an even better goalkeeper. Sure, his head was out of the game when the contract negotiations were going on. And who could blame him? At that time, his missus was in Madrid. It's where he was born, it's where he played previously, he was torn. But then when he committed to United, he committed. And he was again the best goalkeeper in the world. That will happen again next season, if we hold on to David De Gea. And I just don't think United can risk losing him. So what's my opinion on all of this, having seen the arguments for and against selling De Gea? And mine is very, very clear. We'd be utterly mad to sell De Gea and try and replace him. Remember, this is Manchester United. What happened when we tried to replace Cristiano Ronaldo? We signed Obertan, Valencia and Owen. Have we ever properly replaced Paul Scholes or Roy Keane or Robin Van Persie? United are abysmal at replacing their top level players. So the idea of free letting one go makes no sense to me. United need to negotiate, find a deal that they agree with and De Gea agrees with because we have to keep him. Because next year, whether it's in a United shirt, hopefully, or another shirt, De Gea will be the best goalkeeper in the world again. He's not going away. Got at least a decade of him being at the top of the game. And United just cannot afford to let that go. But equally so, we can't afford to lose him on a free next summer. So it's down to United to negotiate properly with a player. It's as simple as that. But what's your take on this whole De Gea situation? Do you think United should keep him, back him, give him the money he wants and put this season behind him? Well, maybe the last third of the season anyway. Or is now the right time to sell De Gea? 
because of the fact that we could lose him on a free next summer and try and reinvest that money into an adequate replacement or make Sergio Romero our number one. There's plenty of debate, plenty of options here, and I'm always interested to hear what you've got to say in the comments below, as always. If you are new to United People's TV and you're still here, well done. Hit that subscribe button. But De Gea, should United sell him or keep him? Let me know what you think.